WHAS 1190 team is all new tonight. More construction for New Albany's downtown. The city's been plagued by a variety of projects and now the Sherman Mitten renewal team's creating more lane closures around the bridge. We've had class cancellations because people can't get across the bridge. Tonight, how businesses are reacting to the latest round of construction. And then, gun violence in Louisville. Tonight, a group of mothers is trying to change the narrative. Um, we celebrate her life by telling her story, you know, to continue on. What changes they're hoping to see, it's all new on The Night Team. Good evening and thanks for joining us here at 11. I'm Brooke Hash. More construction woes for New Albany drivers and businesses. The city that has been plagued by various projects in its downtown all year. Now, nightly lane closures are expected in conjunction with the Sherman Minton Renewal Project. Our Taylor Woods and photojournalist Aspen Hester show us how it's impacting local businesses. Spring in Elm Street in New Albany will have nightly lane closures as the work continues on the Sherman Minton Bridge. And this isn't the first time this southern Indiana city has had construction. Businesses like Viva Art have felt the effect of construction all summer long. And now we're hit with the bridge being closed. People don't want to book a class because they're not sure if they can get here on time or they booked a class and suddenly they can't because the bridge is closed. Leaving more seats empty than full. You know, we, we still want people to come in. We want to keep our prices fair, but it's not going to matter if people can't physically get here from the bridge. Luckily, businesses like Dress and Dwell on Spring Street haven't been affected by construction due to its store hours closing between five and six most nights. I would be lying if I said that sales haven't slowed down a little, but the businesses around us have been um, greater affected. They're happy for a fresh repaved road, but Kim Baldwin feels more notice should be given ahead of time. It is, it's not fun. It would be nice if we had a deadline so that we could plan ahead, but without being able to forecast that, we're just sort of winging it. In the meantime, Katie Eckerson helps drivers will be patient behind the wheel. It'd be nice if everyone could just slow down and, you know, relax and not get their um, weekday started off to kind of a, a mad dash. Nightly lane closures will take place between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m., but it's unclear when they'll end. Erickson and Baldwin are both crossing their fingers it'll happen sooner than later. In New Albany, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 Night Team on your side. Tonight, police are searching for the driver of a deadly hit and run in Shively. The call came in just before nine on Dixie Highway in Crumbs Lane. A man in his 20s was a pedestrian in that collision and died at U of L Hospital a short time later. Anyone with information is encouraged to call Shively Police at 9302SPD. Meanwhile, LMPD is investigating after a deadly wrong way crash on I-265 this morning. Police responded to that crash around five on the Gene Snyder near Bardstown Road. Road. Officers say a car was driving westbound in the eastbound lanes before hitting a box truck head on. That crash caused the car to catch fire and shut down the road for several hours. The driver of the car died at the scene while the box truck driver walked away unharmed. At last check, police could not say whether or not there were any passengers in that car. A man died in the shooting in the Russell neighborhood this morning. LMPD responded to 29th and Cedar Streets just after 9, where they found a man dead from multiple gunshot wounds. Anyone with information is encouraged to call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. Well, gun violence, as you know, continues to be an issue in our city. The latest numbers from LMPD are on par with the number of homicides and shootings we saw this time last year. So far, there have been a total of 306 non-fatal shootings and 113 homicides this year. A group of Louisville mothers who've fallen victim to these numbers have said enough is enough. Our Connor Stephan and photojournalist Emma Gefter share the impacts of gun violence affecting your neighbors. And gun deaths and injuries cost Kentucky nine. A discussion between those who have experienced unthinkable loss. So to be able to come and share that, it makes a big difference. And those looking to prevent more. And I think we're really bringing some change that is much needed. Louisville's Mom Demand Action Chapter hosts these conversations monthly, hoping to bring change to a city that's expected to once again see triple-digit homicides this year. That's 
an everyday part of your news is what you hear. In December of 2021, Shane Summer experienced it firsthand when she lost her daughter. She woke us up to say that she was going to get her something to eat. Um, and when she returned back home, she returned back home to us with a gunshot in the head. The Summer family will mark two years without Shania at the end of this year and without closure. I mean, it's just, it's horrifying, you know, that we have to continue on without our loved ones and then you continue on as well with no justice. And that, you know, my daughter's killer still roams free. This month's meeting held a particular focus on how guns are used in suicides and domestic violence. It's heartbreaking. I mean, because you just never know what a person's going through. You know, some people appear one way on the outside and they struggle with their own storms on the inside. On average, 718 people die by guns every year in Kentucky. 68% of those lost take their own lives. In February, a U.S. District Court judge struck down a Kentucky law, extending more gun rights to subjects of domestic violence. It's an epidemic, and it's important that we um, address this issue. It's too early to know the impact of that ruling, but today, these mothers in Louisville are keeping the pressure on Frankfurt. My hope is that our um, state legislator, legislature starts paying more attention to this issue. Moms Demand Action is proposing stronger background checks and the creation of a crisis and rights retention bill, putting gun controls on those looking to harm themselves and others. And I think our red shirts are becoming commonplace in Frankfurt. In the meantime, they'll continue to meet like this, hopeful for change. In Louisville, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 11 night team on your side. If you or someone you love is struggling with mental health, help is always available. You can call 988 24 hours a day and you'll be connected with a person who can help you. We have also got a list of resources on our website, whas11.com. Legislation surrounding gun laws has been a hotly debated topic across the nation for years, including right here in Kentucky. Just this past year, at least 17 bills were filed that dealt with or mentioned guns. This includes a bill that made Kentucky a Second Amendment sanctuary state after the governor neither signed nor vetoed that legislation passed by the General Assembly. The law prohibits state and local law enforcement agencies from enforcing a federal gun ban in the state. Well, now one state GOP lawmaker says he's working on a bill to prevent gun related deaths while also retaining Second Amendment rights. The bill known as the Crisis Aversion and Rights Retention Bill would allow law enforcement to temporarily seize a person's gun if a judge and law enforcement deem them a danger risk. Kentucky Senator Whitney Westerfield said the goal is to find a practical middle ground. If we can find a way to, to avoid that crisis while still retaining the Second Amendment protections that the Constitution demands, that's what we're hoping to do. And there are people today that are talking about something like car that wouldn't have touched that bill two, three, four, five years ago. So we are making progress. Westerfield, who is also the chairman of the state Senate Judiciary Committee, says lawmakers are discussing what the final version of that bill will look like. Louisville Emergency Management says the EPA wrapped up its work at one of two Highview homes this week where dangerous chemicals were found. The EPA was investigating the vacant home on Applegate Lane filled with mercury where police say 53-year-old Mark Hibble was squatting. We're told the crews needed to remove carpeting and rip up the driveway, which likely won't be re-poured until work at the more dangerous home next door is complete. That home owned by Hibble is where police say they found dangerous and explosive chemicals. The city originally Originally planned a controlled burn for that home, but they're still waiting on a recommendation from the EPA. Well, and just last week, a judge also lowered Hibble's bond from $50,000 to $10,000. Investigators say he admitted to making and detonating homemade explosives. In court, his attorney addressed why he had those chemicals in the first place. He planned to go into business with another chemist. He basically got laid off, judge, um, and he and his boss were going to go start their own chemical handling business. Um, that gentleman passed away. Mr. Hibble was not able to move into that um, business as he had intended. Um, so he had a lot of chemicals stored on his property um, that he had no purpose for anymore and without and he had no means to dispose of them. Being incarcerated. Hibble's attorney also told the court his client has a mental health condition and asked he be released to a social worker for inpatient treatment. But the county argued he is too dangerous to leave jail. 
The man accused of killing his mother back in 2018 is also expected in court tomorrow. This is the second time Gavin Perkins has been charged in the death of his mother. However, his initial charge was dropped in 2018 when he was found incompetent to stand trial. Perkins was admitted to Central State Hospital in 2018 instead and was released last month before the attorney general's office stepped in. A judge did order another mental health evaluation, but this could take up to a year to complete. Perkins is expected back in court tomorrow for a motion hearing.